So, in the clear. In the clear, they're in the clear. Which means to be safe from danger. It's good news. Yep, or to be in a situation where a problem you had previously, or a threat, or concern, some kind of danger or problem is no longer important. It's right. gone. You're away from it. You're in the clear. Okay. So if you if you thought, oh no, I've got an exam tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I didn't study. <gasps> A typhoon comes. You oh. get an extra study day. Oh, I'm in the clear. You're in the clear. Okay. Phew, the problem that was hanging over my head has gone away. Now Good. here, it's the rain that has gone. So That's right. All is well. There you go. So Pat says, let's relax and have some fun. Of course, when you're having a party and something that could ruin everything, like rain at a barbecue, when that happens, you do get a little nervous, right? Mm -hmm. But when you're not nervous or when something that made you nervous has gone away, then you can finally relax. And here we have that word. It's a verb. It's spelled R-E-L-A-X. R-E-L-A-X. To relax, <sighs> is basically just to do that. It's that sort of easy, happy, peaceful feeling you might have on the weekend or in mm. the evening after school or work is done, after your problems have kind of gone away. So you can sit at home, you can watch some TV, read a book, do whatever you do when you have free time. Do whatever you do when you're just trying to enjoy yourself and have fun. That is what it means to relax. For example, you guys play beach volleyball without me. I just want to relax in the sun. Just mm -hmm. take it easy. Absolutely. Uh, Laura, she's still got one problem she mm -hmm. wants to get solved. She says, I'm starving. She's starving. She, well, here we go. Oh Let's gosh. explain this. Yeah. Starving is an adjective. It's mm -hmm. spelled S-T-A-R-V-I-N-G, starving. And what the word really means is you're dying because you haven't got enough to eat. She's not really starving. However, mm. in modern language, the mm. way people talk these days, people often use starving in a very casual, informal way just to mean that they're really hungry. They're not in any danger of dying from lack of food. They're just really hungry. Their stomach is making noises, that kind of thing. So people just say, oh, I'm starving. I need dinner right now, kind of thing. For example, I shouldn't have skipped breakfast. It's still an hour till lunchtime, but I'm already starving. Mm, that's right. It just means, of course, he's really hungry. Mm -hmm. Only if it's been 10 days. That would be starving. Since your last Real food. Starving. That yes. would be really starving. But you're right. People use it just as an extra way, mm -hmm. a more powerful or interesting way of saying, I'm really hungry. So she's starving. She needs some food. Her stomach is making noises. So she asks Pat, can you cook me a sausage? Okay. She wants one of the sausages. Sausages, kind of like the meat in a hot dog. And Pat says, I'm one step ahead of you. Hmm. Now, if you're one step ahead of someone, this means you've kind of already guessed the request someone has or a problem they might have, and you've already taken action to meet this request or fix the problem. Cool. So you're like, okay. I know Laura's going to be hungry. I'll make sure I cook a couple of sausages for her so as soon as she asks, it's ready. She won't have to wait while Pat goes a sausage. All right, give me five minutes. He'll be like, no, it's right here. I already figured out you'd want a sausage. I'm one step ahead. There you go. You're extra prepared for the situation that has just happened. Mm -hmm. And as Pat explains, I've already started cooking some. That's a good exp a good way of explaining how he's one step ahead of her without her having to say anything about being hungry. He already started cooking some food, so it'll be it'll be finished. It'll should be ready be to eat very very soon. He says they should be ready. Oh, no! Oh, no. That's like yesterday we had, uh-oh. Yeah. That is not a good sound. So what do you mean? It's what a happened? little worse, this What one? happened to the sausage? It's not just the sausage. Uh -oh. Laura says, quick, do something, oh. Pat. What? There's, what? there's a cloud of black smoke coming from the grill. The barbecue's on fire. The food's on fire. Ah, this is worse than the rain. All right, here we have that expression. There's a cloud of, a cloud of smoke was coming from the grill. Well, of course, a cloud is one of those white fluffy things you see in the sky on a nice day, right? It's not quite smoke. It's kind of gas or water vapor. But when we do have smoke, when something's burning, for example, or if it's a very thick amount of smoke, we could talk about a cloud of 
smoke. So if something's burning in your kitchen, a cloud of smoke could be coming out of the door. We could also maybe talk about a cloud of steam. If you take a shower, a hot shower in a cold house, when you open the bathroom door, whoosh, all of that water, all of that steam will come out. It's in a thick, powerful amount. We could talk about that being a cloud of something. So basically, there's a lot of stuff in the air and it's making it hard to breathe or hard to see, but it's certainly something that you will notice. And a cloud of smoke coming from a barbecue, that means burned black sausages, no good. Oh boy, so this cloud of smoke coming from the barbecue, it's mm -hmm. bad news. And yep. Laura says, the fire is out of control. This is getting dangerous. Yeah, if something is out of control, it's mm. in a state where it just cannot easily be controlled or handled, either because it's too big, it's too strong, or has too much energy. Oh like gosh. a kid could be out of control if he's just running around, you can't get him to sit down. If a fire's out of control, it's not easy to put it Should out or anything call like the fire that. department. Well, Pat's not so worried. Okay. He says, don't worry. All right, all right. I'll just pour some water on it. Well, so maybe sure. he was one step ahead. He's got yep. a bucket nearby, maybe from the rain earlier. Sure. And he just pours water on the fire. If it's now, a small fire, that should work. That should work, okay. Yeah. Now here we use the verb pour, P-O-U-R, mm. Pour, and that means to make liquid flow out of a container, like a bucket or a mug or a, you know something like that, a cup, and it flows out onto something else, usually in a steady stream. Mm. Okay, so if you were pouring someone tea, it would be quite a slow, gentle stream. Mm -hmm. Pouring a bucket of water, it's maybe going to be all at once, but it will all the stuff at the start will come out at the same speed as the stuff at the end. It's mm. got that steady, fast or slow stream. Here's another example of pour. Let me pour you another cup of tea. Ah, in a careful, gentle, controlled kind of way. Yes. Not like you're trying to put out a fire in my teacup. That yes. would be too much tea too quickly. All right, so Pat pours the water on there. Of course, this is a barbecue. They're burning charcoal or wood. Mm -hmm. You can put out a fire like that by pouring water on it. If it's an oil fire, oh, like your no, french no, no. fries in oil have caught fire, do not pour water on it. Then you should get a fire extinguisher or try to cover it somehow. Mm -hmm. So different fires require different ways. But yes, with a typical simple barbecue, that should be okay. So he does and he says, see, now it's out and everyone is safe. It, meaning the fire, the fire is out. It's not burning anymore. Everyone is safe and we only lost a few sausages. Yes, yeah, he'll probably ruin the things that were on the True. fire. True, they'll have to restart the barbecue yeah, again. Yeah, it's not the end of the world, no. but uh, the fire is out. Of course, if a fire is out, there are no more flames, there's no more smoke, and there's no more burning gas coming off That's it. That's a dead fire. Yes, indeed. So, Laura, I guess she's happy that it's out, but she's, sure. she's still not that impressed by what's uh, gone on. She says, don't act like you you're a hero. Oh, I see, because Pat's like, I put out the fire, don't yeah. worry, I'm the big hero. And she says no, because, no. as she adds, it's your fault the fire got so bad. That's kind of true. Okay, so we just saw Laura use the word fault, F-A-U-L-T, fault. Here, it's a noun, it's your fault, it's someone's fault. We can use it as a verb to fault someone for something, but as a noun, fault means the responsibility for an accident or something else that has gone wrong. It's kind of similar to the word blame. It's your fault, so I'm blaming you, that kind of thing. For example, the boss made the mistake, but he tried to make it look like it was my fault. So what Laura's mm. doing basically there is she is blaming Pat. If you say it's your fault, then we're saying it's your problem. You made the mistake. So really, Pat's kind of the one in trouble and he should be the one who fixes it. Yeah, I guess so. But anyways, we're just glad that nothing got really badly damaged. As Laura <laughs> says, now the fire is out, so we can't cook food until we start a new one. That's right, the fire is out, but they still have a bit of a problem. They need fire for the barbecue, mm -hmm. so they have to start a new fire, and only then will they be able to barbecue or cook the food.
food that yeah. they plan to eat and also give to the guests. So Pat has a fabulous question. What should we do? What are we gonna now, do? Now, of course, it takes a while for the barbecue. It does. You cut, it's not just like, you know, you go, okay, I'll get my match or my lighter, mm. boom. There's the fire again. No, no, it takes a while because he has to get rid of all the old stuff that's wet, wet and dirty. Get new stuff, dry get, it out. Yeah, get that warmed up and going. And like no. we said in day one, make it so that the kind of most of the smoke goes away and it's at the right kind of temperature. Because mm. what you don't want to do with a barbecue is try and cook over it while mm -hmm. it's too hot. Ah, that's a good point. You'll burn the food. It might yep. taste all smoky and nasty. So mm -hmm. it is going to take a little while. This is not as simple as cooking in your kitchen. So Laura has an idea here. She says, I'll bring out the moon cakes so our guests have something to eat. All right, well, that's thinking as a good host or hostess, the person holding the party thinks, well, we're gonna have hungry people, we've gotta get them some food. The good thing is, since it's the mid-autumn festival or moon festival, they have moon cakes there. Normally, these would be eaten as dessert, mm -hmm. possibly, at the end of the meal. But basically, a moon cake is a cake. It's a kind of pastry. It's made with egg and flour, some sugar. You might have red bean inside, egg yolks, lotus seed paste, pineapple, taro, all, taro, all yeah. sorts of things like that. And they often have sort of a design or some writing on the top. You mm -hmm. know what moon cakes are. We all get boxes of them around this time of year. And the good thing is they're ready. The guests can arrive at least they'll eat that. Yeah, I mean, you don't need to cook them on a barbecue, Good you point. just eat them. So Pat, kind of like, all right, I caused the problem, I'll mm. have to fix the problem. So he says, while you do that, mm -hmm. while you get the moon cakes, yep. I'll try to start the fire again and go through all of that long process we just described. Absolutely, because as Pat continues, he says, we still have a lot of food left to cook. Yes, they might have lost a few sausages uh, in the great barbecue fire of 2017, <laughs> but they still have lots of other stuff in the fridge, lots of other food for the guests, but they do need some time mm. to get it cooked. And Laura tells him, okay, but be more careful this time. Mm, yeah, keep your eye on that barbecue. Don't get distracted and let another fire start, as mm -hmm. Laura says. I don't want to invite the fire department to this party. Yeah, they mm. want to have their guests come to the party, but not the fire department, all right? Now, the fire department, basically, this, these are the firefighters, mm -hmm. the guys with the big red trucks and the water and the ladders who save people when there's a fire. But we also have this word department. Department's a noun. It's quite a long word, so let's listen up. D-E... P-A-R-T-M-E-N-T, D-E-P-A-R-T-M-E-N-T, -E 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 department. Kind of spelt like it sounds, it is, right? It's an easier one. It's not too bad, just a little long. What is a department? Basically, it's an organization or it's a smaller group of a bigger organization. Often when we talk about the government, the government has many departments. Mm -hmm. There's the department that's in charge of the army, the yep. department that's in charge of schools. The, the money, the health department service. Hospitals and money and all sorts of laws and rules. The police department, mm -hmm. the police force, yep. the fire department the firefighters and all their bosses and managers and buildings and all that stuff. That is the fire department. So when you pick up the phone and call 119 or whatever and you mm -hmm. ask for a fire truck, you are asking for help from the fire department. For example, the fire department arrived in time to put out the fire quickly because that's what they do. Okay, now after Laura makes this you know, a bit of a joke at a Pat's joke. Let's not invite the fire department. Yeah, Pat, <laughs> Pat frowns at Laura. Mm. Now, to frown is to move your eyebrows, kind of make them lower and mm -hmm. closer to the middle, mm -hmm. generally to show you don't like something, mm. you don't believe something, or you don't understand something. Kind of mm. like this, mm. Mm. you know. Mm. Hey, that's not funny. Mm. I don't understand, or mm, I don't believe you, or... Hmm, I don't like that. Yeah, exactly. He didn't really like her joke. Ha ha, funny, funny, but he didn't find it too funny. If someone's no. teasing you and you're not really mm. joining in the joke, that might be a good time to frown. Okay, but he's going to get back to work. He, mm -hmm. You know, he's got to take that, really. He did start the fire. True, she true. She can make jokes on him, but there you go. Okay, that brings us to the end of today's article and our For You chat question.